Here's a realistic, it's labeled as the R8000. Um, it's pretty much the same turntable as the Lab 300. I think in Canada, it was released as the R8000, but it's exactly the same. I've had a three, R Lab 300. I think I've done a video on one actually, and they're, they are identical. There's nothing different about them except the name. Realistic is an interesting company to me. It's it's um, it's got a really uh, unusual or unique place in vintage audio history. Whereas it's um, kind of associated very closely with Radio Shack. I mean, Radio Shack show, sold realistic products, and Radio Shack had a reputation of being you know quick and dirty, um, budget friendly. Uh, on a street in most small towns in Canada, especially, you'd have a Radio Shack, and in there you could buy patch cords, you could buy inexpensive audio equipment, walkie-talkies, cameras, all kinds of stuff like that. And on the same street, they'll have a um, another audio store, uh, which was set up differently. It was more like a living room, and they had um, a series of amps, receivers, turntables, none of them being realistic. They would have been Sansui, Pioneer, Marantz, that sort of thing. Um, but a lot of the realistic equipment is um, exactly the same, made by the same companies that made the Sansuis and the Pioneers, and the insides are identical. I mean, I've had a number of realistic um, tape decks, realistic turntables, etc., and I've opened them up and I said, God, this looks just like a, a Hitachi or, or what, what have you, or a Sansui. Um, and realistic is... Um, a very interesting company in the sense that they're responsible for bringing Kenwood into North America. At that point, it was Trio, and Trio um, worked with Realistic to come over to North America, and then was rebranded as Kenwood. So it's they're a good company. They're a good quality company, and this turntable is an example of that. This is a really well-built turntable. Um, it's all steel. It's wood with a veneer covering. It plays very well. This is a two-speed belt drive. Um, the, the counterbalance over there is quite unique. The anti-skate mechanism down here, this is dirty, I apologize, it needs a cleaning. The, everything about it is strong. I feel like this is very similar to any um, uh, CDE, CDC rather, turntables. Um, there's something about it. It's definitely made in Japan. It's definitely got that look and feel about it. Um, to start this sucker up, you, um, you simply, I always raise, bring this over here a little bit, and then raise, whoops, sorry, raise the tone arm. Um, it takes a while to engage the right speed. Um, this is a, a realistic head shell, realistic cartridge with a sure stylus, sorry, realistic head shell with a, Realistic cartridge and a sure uh, stylus. And to begin playing, you simply drop the needle down. And then, if, I'm sorry, I've had a couple of people commenting saying that they wish they could hear the audio. And I'll, I'll get there. I will definitely get there. But this is really only about the mechanisms and how it all works. And then after the uh, record is completed, the needle will rise, the tone arm would rise on its own and return to the cradle. Um, if you wanted to stop it early, you just flick your switch down here. They call it a reject button. And um, uh, the tone arm rises and then returns back to its cradle. Everything is nice and quiet. Everything runs really, really well. This was made in 1977. And here we are, almost 50 years later, and it's still performing very, very well. Um, this is a beautiful turntable, as I said. It's got a really good look to it. There is um, this anti-static mechanism here that was popular back in the day. I'll probably remove it. It, it does look cool when you have like look what look, looks like two tone arms going in your turntable, and people say, "Wow, it looks pretty cool." Um, but with proper care and proper insulation and what have you, you really don't need that. Um, everything on this is original, as I said. It's got the realistic, uh, this needs a cleaning, realistic um, dust cover. And 
and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Thank you so much for watching.